Here's a simple tip that's going to help you hit great one-handed backhands. And it's all about keeping the non-hitting hand on the racket for longer. Now to help me demonstrate this, I've got the Topspin Pro here. To get your own for at-home practice, just use my link. It's in the description. I'm also going to pin it in the first comment. Now when people think about the one-handed backhand, they think that it's just one hand, right? It's in the name of the stroke. You just think of, oh, it's a one-handed shot. But actually, you're best using two hands on your one-handed backhand until just before you hit the ball and then letting go. Let me explain. You have to think of it as you take the racket back with two hands, you're going to drop the racket with two hands, you're going to begin moving the racket toward the ball with two hands, and then just about the time your non-hitting hand is in front of your belly button, that's when you begin moving it back. What I typically see with recreational players who struggle with their one-handed backhand is they let go way too soon with their non-hitting hand. They'll take the racket back with two hands, but as the racket begins dropping, they'll let go. Now, one of the reasons players let go with the non-hitting hand is because they're trying to move it back. I mean, they think about that Grigor Dimitrov beautiful backhand and the non-hitting hands going backward, uh, you know, Shapovalov and team and, and um, you know, Tsitsipas. You, th you see these beautiful one-handed backhands. You're thinking, I want to hit a backhand like that. And I see this non-hitting hand going behind them as they hit. But upon further inspection, what you notice with the recreational players who let go too soon is as the racket drops and they try to move this arm back, this energy is now dissipated. It's gone. And now they still have to swing forward. So you see the non-hitting hand go back, then get yanked forward, and then they look like they're going to give their opponent a hug. Instead of letting go while the racket's dropping, drop the racket with both hands, and then go toward the ball with both hands. And then just before you hit, that's when you let go. Now you truly get a counterbalance. You stay sideways. Every action has an equal and opposite, so it helps you to swing faster. And the non-hitting hand staying on helps you close the racket. The benefit of closing the racket prior to hitting is it helps square the racket against the back of the ball as you strike so you can swing low to high and the ball goes forward as you swing up for topspin. So watch me hit a couple backhands. I'm even going to show you Grigor Dimitrov in a few seconds here. But watch how I take the racket back with both hands. I drop, I go forward, then I let go. And if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, maybe you want to find a local league at your level, or you want to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link for Play Your Court. And it's playyourcourt.com slash two-minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. So get yourself a Top Spin Pro. And if you would like me to work with you personally on how you can improve any part of your game, Go to 2-Minute Tennis, uh, 2MinuteTennis.net, and get yourself a video stroke analysis lesson, and I'll show you exactly how to improve your technique. So take your racket back with both hands, drop with both hands, go toward the ball with both hands, then let go and spin the ball. You'll stay sideways, you'll be able to close your racket face, you'll be able to track your racket out towards your target, and there's no doubt. You're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.